Welcome to From the Lab episode one for the Topher Spin Weekly Meteorite Group Hangout. I'm Daniel Sheik, and today I'll be covering one of the very interesting classifications that I'm currently working on and plan to submit to the Meteoritical Bulletin. So this sample is uh, actually a very interesting sample. It was sent to me by geologist Juan A. Poblador. Uh, and when he sent it to me, he actually wasn't sure what it was. He thought it could be a potential meteor wrong, or if it was something perhaps in LL or L6, as for what he told me. Uh, a couple of things that I noted when I obtained the sample from him was I noticed that there was some minor fusion crust present on some of the pieces, but not all of them. So it appears a lot of it was weathered away. I did notice, of course, that the interior was weathered. You have these uh, zones right here that clearly have been weathered, but some of the areas are relatively fresh on the inside. You can also notice the presence of vesicles throughout the samples. Some of them are small. You have these holes right here. A few of them are larger. And you also notice these melt pockets right here, or melt areas, whatever you want to call them. And you can see it's quite variable depending on what piece you're looking at. Some of them contain a greater volumetric percent, and some of them, like this one, you can't even see them. So. That was something also to find interesting about the sample. The next thing, of course, to do is to look at it under thin section. So I did petrography work. And so this is in plain polarized light. This is in cross polarized light. And the first thing I noticed was an echogranular texture. What that means is that the relative grain size between all the major grains is, for the most part, similar. In this case, uh, most of these grains were actually made up of recrystallized enstatite. So you can see the low, the low interference colors, the low birefringence. Uh, try to ignore these small marks here. That's just remnants of the carbon coating process. But basically, uh, most of this, about 94 volume percent of this sample is uh, recrystallized enstatite with an average grain size of about 75 plus or minus 10 microns. It could be a little larger, but that's generally what I found from measuring some of them. And there are accessory phases that are also found here. It might be tough to see them, but there's albitic plagioclase, which means it's relatively sodium rich. You have a couple of different sulfides in here. So you have old hemite, which is calcium sulfide. You have dubrilite, you have troilite. And then of course you have uh, what appeared to be a glassy phase that was uh, silica rich, or I guess quartz normative, if you want to call it that way. And then lastly, I had very tiny grains of metal, mostly chemisite, scattered throughout the sample. It really depended on what fragments you hit. So going back here, some of these I saw metal, some of these I didn't. So I didn't hit too many grains, but there were some metal grains there. So in terms of geochemistry, by hitting this enstatite, it's basically pure end member enstatite. What that means is that it's extremely magnesium rich and for the most part, uh, this is just, for the most part, I guess you'd say near end member or almost pure enstatite composition. The plagioclase, as I said, was albitic, meaning that it was mostly sodium rich, so not much calcium in it. And there is some amount of potassium in there, but a small amount. And I actually managed to get some of the silicon from the chemisite or the metal, and there's about one to two, about 1.5 weight percent of silicon in there. So what does this all mean? What, what is this, what, why am I doing all this? Well, from what I noted, this looked to be either a melted enstatite chondrite that had recrystallized or an aubrite, both of which contain, are pretty much made up primarily of pure enstatite plus some other phases. So that was sort of where I'm getting at by finding the enstatite. Now the question is, which of the two is it? And if it is an enstatite chondrite, what type? Because we have EH chondrites and we have EL chondrites. So primarily looking at this, uh, this seems to be what I believe to be an enstatite melt rock, in specifics, an EL melt rock. So EL due to the fact that uh, there's enstatite in the sample, uh, there's chemisite with low amounts of silica, or silicon, sorry, and then there's also, in terms of what sulfides are present, dobrylite and uh, old hemite, the troilite, especially the fact that the dobrylite contains some mang manganese in there seems to favor more of an EL over an EH. And lastly, I said this was a melt rock because of the fact that the enstatite is primarily recrystallized. It's not as large as you would see in aubrites, you know, about 
75 to maybe 90 microns. It's not, you know, 400, 500 microns you normally see in albrights. Uh, there's also vesicles scattered throughout the sample. And of course you have melt pockets of, you know, varying abundances in different samples. That tells you this sample was incompletely melted. And if you'd like to learn more on EL melt rocks, there's a very, very cool research article by Dr. Alan Rubin back in 2016. It's called Impact Melting of the Largest Known Enstatite Meteorite, Algonia 001, a fossil EL chondrite. Uh, I have actually taken a look at Algonia 001. There's a lot of pairings to this EL melt rock. And a question you might have is, well, is this rock potentially paired to it? And it does have a lot of similarities to it. The only difference I noticed primarily was the grain size, that it was a little smaller. And I did manage to see some of this fusion crust here. So it looks to be a little more fresh than some of the other pieces of Algonia 001 in those pairings I've seen. So I can't definitively say if this is paired with it or not, but it does have similarities. But then again, they're both EL melt rocks. So if you would like your sample to be shown next, uh, please send me samples to classify. I am working for the next uh, three months or so doing full-time classifications uh, for funding uh, since I'm attending, gonna be attending Portland State University for my PhD in the fall. So uh, any samples that you'd like to get classified, please send those to me. I'll be happy to take care of any lab work. And if I find an interesting sample, I might show it on one of the next coming uh, Telfer Spin Meteorite Group weeks. So thanks for having me. And here's my email in case you'd like to contact me or through Facebook. Thank you.